Now, let me pull up. Well, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you that you are with us. We pray now that as we uh, listen to your word, as we hear from it, uh, that you would work powerfully through uh, your word to uh, transform us and that you would help us to become more like Jesus. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is a crazy time to be alive, isn't it? Uh, Who would have thought just a week or two ago that you couldn't go to the supermarket and get toilet paper if you needed it, or pasta, or rice? Uh, Who would have thought that uh, when you met someone, you'd have to think twice about how to touch them and how close you could stand to them and whether you were two arms width apart for appropriate social distancing? Who would have thought that day after day after day you would log into the stock market and see crash after crash after crash, that you would see your superannuation balance uh, plummet away day after day after day? And, uh, and small businesses we would see them struggle, Uh, and churches would be all meeting together in the online space instead of, uh, as we normally do and have done for hundreds of years in this church, gather every Sunday together uh, to worship God. These are extraordinary and unprecedented times, and they're scary. They're scary times. They're times that uh, uh, cause us to feel afraid because we have no idea what the future holds. I've got no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. When I've got no idea what's going to happen at the next press conference when uh, Scott Morrison is going to tell us uh, uh, that there's some new measure we need to take in order to continue to main our, remain safe. I've got no idea when a vaccine is going to come. There, there is a lot that is unknown and uh, uh, for some of our people... Uh, this has already had a real effect on us. We've lost our jobs. We've had our financial security uh, taken away from us. We're worried about that happening in the future. What do we make of all of this? Well, our reading today that James read for us is from Romans, and I think it's got some very insightful and important things to say to us. Paul starts that uh, section of Romans by saying, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. Paul suffered greatly for his ministry of uh, planting churches and telling people about the good news of Jesus Christ. We're undergoing a different kind of suffering. A a a suffering brought on us by a a pandemic that leads to great fear and to great worry and potentially to real financial hardship. But Paul reminds us that when things are tough in this life, it is a reminder to us to focus on what is real and what is awaiting us, our future glory. We recently farewelled a dear sister to us uh, in our church and uh, as we did that, we, we did it with, with sad and heavy hearts but with a deep joy because we remembered that she was now enjoying the future glory and that's the future glory that we have to look forward to that can sustain us through a period of fear and suffering and difficulty the glory of our salvation and the new heavens and the new earth where we won't have to worry about coronaviruses or economic collapses or social distancing. All of that will be gone. But of course, the other thing Paul reminds us about in this reading is that we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't actually be surprised that this has happened. Uh, Let me just read to you uh, from... Uh, verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. 
Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we eagerly wait for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. The whole of creation, verse 22, has been groaning in the pains of childbirth. Creation is broken. We are broken by what? By sin. Uh, there are going to be all sorts of things that happen in this world that are hard and difficult and painful. Things like COVID-19. And, and while it's sort of shocking and, and hard to get our heads around because we've never experienced anything like it, uh, the Bible tells us creation groans in the pangs of childbirth because it is affected by sin, just like you and me. And we groan too because our bodies are affected by sin and the Spirit of God inside us points us to what will be. We'll be new in that glorious new heavens and new earth. The creation will be new in that glorious heaven. New heavens and new earth. It's a tough time to be alive. It's a tough time in our world. But we have a future hope. And we, we knew that, that life could be difficult because we know what sin is and we know what it has done to our world. So if that's the case, what kind of attitude should we have as we live life in this new normal of uh, uh, dealing with viruses and all of this kind of thing. What kind of attitude do we need to have? Well, I think there are, are, are three things we need to remember. We are not called in this season to an attitude of doom and gloom and pessimism and uh, uh, selfishness. No. What does Paul say when he reminds us that we have a greater hope, that creation groans, what does he then go on to say? He calls us to hope. Verse 24, For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Because of our future glory, because we know what is coming... We can live in today, no matter what it throws up at us, more restrictions, new viruses, whatever it might be, we can live in hope that, you know, that this is just a small moment in time compared to the eternity we are going to spend in perfection in heaven with Jesus. We don't have an attitude of fear, but of hope. But also... We take an attitude of prayerfulness in the midst of our suffering. Take a look at verses 26 to 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do know, not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So in the midst of a world that's changing rapidly and uh, in the midst of an experience of life that we've never had before, uh, we look forward to what will be with hope and God gives us the gift of His Spirit as we groan about this and we don't quite know what to pray or what to th feel. The Spirit of God helps us to have a heart of prayer to lift up this situation, to lift up our worried hearts, our troubled minds and to lift those things up to God in prayer, knowing our hope, looking forward to perfection in spirit-filled prayer. And, Paul says, not only, not only should we have an attitude of hope, not only should we have an attitude of prayer, but we also should have an attitude of trust, verse 28 through 30. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, 
who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. God knew this was going to happen. And he knew you were going to be alive now. And he knew you were going to be a follower of Jesus in the midst of this crisis. And he has promised to work all things for our good. To make us more like Jesus. That's our ultimate good. And so as we trust the God who is in sovereign control, we know that ultimately things are going to work out for our good. Because God loves us and we love him. Hope, prayer, trust. These are the things that God calls us to in the midst of a changing world, in the midst of the most difficult of times. God is in control. God loves us and nothing can separate us from him. We might be separate from one another, but we will never be separated from God. Let me read again. Who then is, the, uh, sorry, uh, from verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor any height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation like coronavirus will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. It is a difficult time to be alive. Let's not beat around the bush. It is a scary time. But God calls us as his followers not to fear, not to hoarding, but to deep and abiding trust in his sovereign control, to an attitude of prayerful dependence and to an eye to the future a glorious hope that awaits each and every one of us. And he wants to tell you and me today and as we go forward and feel afraid that there is nothing that can separate us from God's love, even if we're separated from one another 